Namaskar and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 28 of the Diversity BW Hotelier, the GM Show, season two. It's a wonderful day, and I have some excellent general management talent on show today. And we are in Gujarat. And it's also the weekend, Friday, December 1. The topic today is amazing. It's Vibrant Gujarat 2025, Operational Impact on Hospitality and Vision Beyond. Before I go ahead any further, let me bring in my partner to the series Diversity with their video. All right. Now, this is a great show to uh, be in Gujarat. We know Gujarat is hot. Gujarat is happening. But before we really get into the details of the discussion, a little bit on the series. You're aware it is held every Thursday and Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. I'm sure you've blocked your time. Just in case you're not able to watch it live, do not stress. Watch the recordings. They're there on bwhotelier.com online or across our social media platforms. Block your time, be there, follow us. And now let me just get on with the show. Vibrant Gujarat 2025, Operational Impact on Hospitality and Vision Beyond. Let me bring in my first colleague on the show, Avik Sen Gupta, who's the Cluster General Manager for the Taj Skyline in Ahmedabad. Welcome to the show, Avik. Thank you. Thank well, you for having me. Such a pleasure, Avik. Thank you. Uh, next one is Keenan McKenzie, the general manager of the ITC Narmada, someone who's just hosted the Indian cricket team during the World Cup. Welcome to the show, Keenan. Hello to the BW Delia team and Mr. Kanna. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. Delighted to have you on the show. Next in is my dear old friend earlier in Delhi, Suraj Kumar Jao, the general manager of the well-appointed Crown Plaza Ahmedabad City Centre. Welcome to the show, Suraj. Greetings, Bhavnesh. Um, a warm welcome to, to all the other panelists here. And it's such a pleasure being on your show again, uh, Bhavnesh. Always a pleasure having you on our show, Suraj. Thank you. Uh, Next one is somebody who I hold high in my esteem, given his fantastic moustache, Puneet Bejal, who is the general manager of the Hyatt Regency in Ahmedabad. Welcome, Puneet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Khanna, for the compliments. And uh, it's an honor to be a part of this esteemed group. Uh, I have been hearing uh, many more of our colleagues from different states, cities, what a phenomenal show. I must congratulate you and it's a pleasure to be a part of it this time here. I'll I'll accept those compliments with both hands folded in gratitude, Puneet. Thank you so much. Next is Avinash Deshok, my dear friend from Baroda. He's the general manager of the Welcome Hotel in Vadodara. Welcome to the show, Avinash. Good afternoon and thank you for having me on the show. Uh, Mr. Khanna, it's a privilege uh, and a pleasure to be on the show. Delighted. And good afternoon to everybody. Delighted, Avinash. Last but not the least is somebody from the Diamond District of the country, Amit Mehta, who is the Area Director and General Manager of the Surat Marit Hotel. Welcome to the show, Amit. Hello, Amit. Okay, he'll Good come. Good afternoon, Mr. Khanna. Thank you so much for having me in the show again. 
I think it's a fantastic show and I look forward to being part of it again. Thank you for making it special, Amit. Now, a bit on the topic. You know, in the vibrant tapestry of Gujarat's growth, we all know where Gujarat is and where it is headed, right? It's literally exponential, the curve over there. The role of a general manager in the luxury hospitality sector is paramount. As we delve into the operational impact of vibrant Gujarat movement and chart a course for the next three years, our focus is on the visionaries steering the course of luxury hotels. In that case, you all gentlemen. The demands are high, the competition is intense, and the expectations unprecedented. As my esteemed audience joins us, we engage with general managers who are not just navigating this challenging landscape, but are poised to emerge as the architects of Gujarat's hospitality future. So gentlemen, you have a lot of load on your shoulders, great responsibility on your hands, and we look forward to your capabilities and your vision. Uh, let me just get on straight with the show with my first question to Avik. Avik, if I may, I want to talk about the economic resurgence in Gujarat. If you can assess how the economic resurgence catalyzed by vibrant Gujarat influences the luxury hospitality market. Thank you for uh, asking a very, very important question. So as we all know that Gujarat is um, one of the leading and forefront uh, states in India. It's the economic uh, powerhouse of India, you may call it so. So Vibrant Gujarat is an effort by the government to bring a lot of industries into Gujarat and bringing a lot of infrastructure, a lot of development into Gujarat, which brings economic prosperity. Now, with economic prosperity, there are people who are coming from outside and there are people who are within Gujarat who benefit from this economic prosperity. So the people who are coming from outside, from different parts of the world, they want the best in class luxury hospitality. Because if they don't get that, then how do they work? How do they focus on their work? And that is where we come in. Similarly, the people who are earning a lot of money in Gujarat, people who are get, getting gainful employment, they then have disposable incomes, which they want to spend in hotels. That again gives rise to hospitality industry and particularly the, the luxury one. So vibrant Gujarat and Gujarat becoming an economic powerhouse has a direct bearing on improvement in hospitality landscape, especially in the luxury landscape. So I think good times to look at. Oh, thank you. That was short. That was crisp and very succinct. Yes. Uh, you know, economic resurgence has impact on direct and indirect, be it employment, be it taxation, be it business, right? And it, all in all, it augurs so well for uh, the state and the country, and of course, our industry. Thank you, Avik. You said a good uh, uh, statement for the show. Now, let me get in with you, uh, Keenan. You know, let's talk about sustainable luxury practices. You know, luxury hotels are extremely demanding, demanding upon our environment, demanding upon our resources. And uh, why don't you delve into you and your vision for infusing sustainable practices into the operation of luxury hotels? Who better than somebody who's uh, at the helm of the ITC Narmada, you know, an ITC and sustainability, we know they go hand in hand. You're muted. Well, thank you for asking me this question, sir. As you know, responsible luxury is the core ethos of ITC hotels. Keeping sustainability at the heart of hospital practices is something which ITC hotels has been doing for a very long time now. Sustainable business practices that are designed to preserve local culture, focus on environmental conservation, and optimal resource consumption. This is currently the DNA which we are trying to infuse in all our hotels as well as the employees that work with us. In the consumption-driven world that we are living in currently, sir, mindful choices and practices are the only ways forward, something that we need to put into practice. 
currently at the unit we are doing various initiatives which are helping in these sustainable practices firstly by i mean the way we have tied up is with cuisine led as well as tying up and showcasing the state cuisine led we have our or- origin story series which we have launched which explains how to relate to the state through food epic journeys is also something that we are doing which helps to relate to the state on tourism which can move from one point to another point apart from the lead certification and being the first lead platinum certified hotel in the state of gujarat getting sustainable practices into every aspect and firstly is to train our staff to teach them how to convey this to guests i believe that we were in a in a, in a generation where we were taught and we adapted but the generation going forward which i see including my own daughter when she comes up and says let's do this let's do that this is not right for the environment it is very important that going into the future these things will play a big role when people choose hotels when the, when the generation that is upcoming in the next 5 6 years because that is something they are taught on a day to day basis whereas we got to know this later so sustainable work practices getting it conveyed relating preserving local art culture which is a core bottom and very important for us to take forward that is what is necessary sir and i believe that being part of itc hotels we are taking this forward in every way and the best ways that we know how excellent uh, yeah, you know the very fact that we are conscious we are aware and we have it kept on the dashboard is important and look uh, sustainable practices for luxury hotels is now no more just about tissues plastic bottles and consumables all right we i mean you talk about lead certification which itc has across so many hotels i think all hotels would do each each other a favor by holding hands and crossing that line of acceptance together all right so thank you so much kinan your response is extremely important um let me get in with you uh, suraj let's talk about development strategy look as far as i am concerned if at all the challenge is there it's not just environment and sustainability it's development india could do with a lot more hotels right we we're, we're really really underdone on that so uh, if you can tell me given the substantial infrastructure development in gujarat particularly ahmedabad how do you plan to capitalize on these opportunities as a hotelier well thank you bhuvnesh for asking me a wonderful question in fact uh, i would also like to echo what avik mentioned a while before that how cities or states or perhaps the country benefit from the development of infrastructure and as you know that Uh, the hotel itself has been fighting to get a infrastructure status in many states some states though have agreed on that and if you look at infrastructure i guess the major pillars for any state or city to develop on infrastructure rests on certain parameters be it sports infrastructure be it entertainment platform travel or connectivity business park and also the exhibition centers now we know that how gujarat or in fact if i talk about amdavad as a city has developed all these parameters as far as infrastructure is concerned we saw motor a stadium the biggest in the world with a seating capacity of 125000 spectators we saw cricket power matches here we recently had this year itself the national games took place in amdavad we seen games of kabaddi and also not to forget we've been his listening interesting stories about olympics now what what happens to the state economy if games like this are sponsored or supported when we move from sports and look at entertainment we see a lot of movies which are being shot in gujarat and quite a few cities which are gaining a lot of confidence in terms of movie makers includes champaner vadodara kutch amdavad to name a few and not to forget we're looking at how the government is encouraging in terms of making a film city here also i hear that the next film fair award is being held in amdavad perhaps for the first time moving out of mumbai travel and connectivity when you see i'm sure you remember the first bullet train is going to be running between amdavad and mumbai 
Now, besides the bullet train, ports at Mundra, road infrastructure, networks on ports and, and road network has really helped the state to come out and emerge as a strong winner. And when we develop roads and ports, the industrial parks, or perhaps SEZ that the government wants to encourage and build, there are several locations like Sanin, Changodar, Narol, Gandhinagar, and there are important accounts, there are important companies that are currently operating. I mean, even to name a few, Maruti, Honda. In fact, I hear Tesla has also acquired land here. This is first land acquired by Tesla. Now, if all this development works together, it brings in more and more travelers, either they are traveling for business or tourism, and which ultimately affects and benefits the hotels. And hotel does support the economic development of the state. I'm pretty sure with the kind of development that we're seeing, it is going to be a fantastic time and dynamic times ahead. We all are pretty excited to look at more and more such development. And I'm sure that my fellow colleagues here on the panel will also be extremely happy to hear that how we're going to be benefiting from these infrastructure development happening in this state. So, you know, uh, also you forget that the uh, Delhi Mumbai highway is going to pass through this, uh, through Gujarat, right? It and is going to pass. It is. It is. And and we also forget that one of the biggest producers of milk products in the world, Amul, is there, yes, no. right? Yes. And our very own Reliance and all the refineries. Look, the action is already there. The template is already there. I mean, we are also seeing the flight of capital from uh, China. Yes. Uh, all in all, if I was an Indian, I'll keep my fingers crossed because the challenge is not how much for me the challenge is when right we've got to have the right building block and plans in place and you guys will take a lot of load i'm look your adrs are already very very healthy i think you could do a little less but with more rooms so no, absolutely absolutely i agree with you and 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 i should also have mentioned pharmaceutical textile diamonds Are these Baba, are industries. you forget that the guju is the world's biggest traveler and more gujus are sitting overseas than they are here right so they keep coming back and the yes. spiritual tourism or uh, sardar vallabhbhai patel's statue that brings me to puneet puneet uh, my friend from gwalior in Ahmedabad, tell me, let's talk a bit about global appeal and uh, innovative marketing. You know, I've already told you, Gujarat needs no introduction. Our, pre our Prime Minister is a great brand ambassador for Brand India and Brad Gujarat. He's done a lot of selling. So discuss innovative marketing strategies to position Gujarat's luxury hospitality on the global stage. So thank you so much. I think uh, we all are aware that how important the digital uh, platforms have become than ever before. And they are always evolving uh, from the place where they were. And uh, technology is taking a new step uh, in order to make it better than what it used to be before. Uh, as you rightly said, our prime minister is a great ambassador uh, for our state, including uh, the Chinese premier or the UK prime minister or the US president, whosoever uh, comes into Ahmedabad first lands into, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the before the country it lands into Ahmedabad, right? And then they go wherever they have to. So uh, from the point of view uh, of marketing, uh, Gujarat is the uh, only state where the tourism department is ultra active and almost acts like an event company uh, to drive the state phenomenally uh, higher uh, in terms of its uh, context, uh, in terms of its culture, in terms of its capability, what Gujarat can do. And of course, the way it collaborates various synergies of different departments into one uh, as an entity. Uh, 
And when you look at uh, uh, whatever uh, our colleagues Suraj spoke before or or even Keenan and Avik, uh, the, the idea is that whatever we say is so great about Ahmedabad or Gujarat or our industry, I think uh, without marketing, uh, it won't be known to the people around the globe. Uh, and for that, uh, the topic of our uh, talk today and the event of vibrant Gujarat that's happening in January 2024 is a prime example that the state itself feels that we are a vibrant state, whether it is in form of its colorful culture or dynamism in investments with Gift City or uh, the latest announcements of uh, cultural parks that are coming in. Uh, there is huge emphasis on uh, on bringing the Olympics into the system. And Gujarat has taken the first step to kind of uh, bring in this innovation uh, in, uh, in, in marketing all these pitches, which are at a global stage and, and nothing is at a, at, a, at a local level. Now, when we talk about the Sardar Vallabhai Patel statue at Statue of Unity, what a great marketing positioning of Gujarat at a world stage, you know. Uh, people have been talking about Statue of Unity uh, near Newark and Manhattan to go there and, and visit. And, and as children, we have seen it. And now Siddhar Vallabhai Patel's uh, statue is becoming a rage. You know, I mean, lakhs and lakhs of tourists uh, are coming in. If you look at what we have, uh, natural beauty with run of Kutch, you know, uh, they have really gone ahead and promoted runoff catch so beautifully. Uh, we had a G20 summit wherein uh, most of our hotels, we collaborated to do a big catering uh, for the world G20 delegates. And, uh, and they have built a road called as Road to Heaven. And when you drive on that road, I mean, with ocean on both sides, white sand, I mean, you really feel you're in heaven, you know. Till now, we have only heard about Kashmir, you know. But what you see here, the natural beauty and you, you see flamingos on the shore, it's, it's such a beautiful sight to drive on that road, you know. Uh, in terms of strategic innovation, they are looking at, I mean, they're being so disruptive. Uh, they are they are doing incremental uh, tourist spots. Uh, they are bringing architectural innovation in terms of promoting the beauty through uh, the adalaj of ancient times. Uh, they are looking at radical innovation with Science City, uh, whether it is to do with the the, the largest uh, museum uh, aquarium here in the city in the country, or you look at the robotic park. Uh, so, a huge emphasis that is going on. Another side of the story that Gujarat is developing and marketing itself well is medical tourism. A great amount of people I see traveling from Mumbai, Delhi to get high quality, affordable. There are national award winning doctors who have set up their own premises in the city of Ahmedabad and people travel from South of Africa and many other places. To, to do this, you know. So overall, I believe that uh, I think uh, with, with latest innovations, one very important point before I end is Gujarat is the only state which has implemented uh, innovation policy. And uh, there's a website called SSIP Gujarat. And anybody can go through that website and look at innovation. Uh, there are startups and you have great opportunity to get funds to the government to be start setting up your business through this innovation platform in marketing through SSIP. So uh, anybody who is listening to this should go through the website and, and look at opportunities in, in the state of Gujarat. Thank you, Puneet. Thank you. you know, uh, the opportunities are so many. The challenge really is in being able to showcase to the world stage at large of what Gujarat means beyond just having a petrol refinery and being a good destination for manufacturing automobiles or pharmaceuticals or glassware. In fact, nobody recalls that Yera was one of the first, uh, uh, you know, glassware manufacturer. And in uh, Avinash's own Baroda, right? So, yeah, it's a great state. And also, there's no taking away from the fact that the entrepreneurial spirit of a Guju, right, 
is so infectious that uh, you just have to throw them the challenge. I mean, we can see our country progressing because of that. There you are. There you are. So, yeah. So, one has got to start thinking out of the box. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Puneet. Uh, thank you. Avinash, I'm coming. We just spoke about Baroda Rao. We've yet not spoken about uh, fabrics. Right. So, uh, let's talk about, you know, when the opportunities are immense as they are, we've also got to be prepared for crisis management and resilience. So let's talk about how GMs are ready and prepared with strategies to navigate unforeseen challenges and crises. Absolutely. I think uh, with so much uh, talk of, uh, you know, the next three years and the next five years and so on, uh, it, it's also uh, probably relevant and pertinent to uh, take a minute to stop and uh, look at what, uh, you know, we can do if there uh, does come across a situation like we've all sort of been through recently. <clears throat> so we've all emerged from a, a very large uh, global crisis and, uh, you know, each uh, country and each uh, state and each city uh, had had different shades, uh, you know, in which they, uh, you know, performed and you know came through. So, uh, in a in a in a nutshell, a crisis means uh, essentially a time of intense difficulty or uh, a danger. So, what what uh, we need to see is that uh, no matter what the product is or no matter what the service is, uh, all companies essentially have one common characteristic, which is that uh, there, there are people who work in teams. Right. So, so essentially companies succeed when the teams are resilient and uh, they are able to weather a storm or, or you know, handle trouble uh, that comes their way. So uh, effectively, uh, teams that are more resilient and are, and are sort of and they have a plan and they have a certain uh, you know, attitude towards how to take on a challenge are the teams that are able to weather the storm and come through. So uh, uh, great examples of, of various companies uh, putting into place various initiatives. Uh, in, in the past, uh, during the pandemic time, uh, where where uh, different protocols were established and you know uh, people followed them and then they came through the uh, crisis in you know uh, in in, uh, in 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 great uh, you know forms and formats. Uh, so the, the the key is to understand what uh, really are the essentials uh, that that uh, you require to have in place uh, to weather a storm. And uh, effectively, uh, there are there are sort of four factors that uh, one can look at. Uh, one is that uh, there doesn't need to be an excess of uh, confidence. One has to be confident, but not be overconfident. Uh, there needs to be planning in place in terms of what one needs to do. Uh, how does one sort of weather the storm? Uh, there needs to be an ability to in innovate or improvise. I think that's something that uh, came through uh, quite clearly during the uh, pandemic uh, in the past, where and find new uh, forms of uh, you know services or create new products we're able to sort of come back into the market stronger and you know uh, create a, a value proposition for themselves and and create uh, you know uh, revenues there's also the uh, the psychological safety aspect which is very critical when there is a crisis uh, one needs to give assurance to the workforce one needs to give assurance to you know oneself and to the family and friends around you uh, that that there is that there is uh, stability at hand that there is uh, you know there is something to look forward to and once you create that roadmap where you have something to look forward to then I think the teams are able to sort of gravitate towards that uh, standpoint mm -hmm. and then sort of come together and you know sort of uh, push in one direction which is what is necessary when one has to uh, come through a crisis and look ahead so I think these are the essentials that uh, one one needs to look at when there is a crisis. Uh, the presence of a reliable uh, and a resilient team, uh, the presence of a plan, the presence of uh, a psychological safety net or a safety barrier, where one is able to say that, uh, yes, there is something, you know, once one establishes a protocol and we all follow it, then there is something to look forward to at the end and there is a way through the crisis. So I think these are the elements that one needs to be, uh, be able to sort of put into place. And and uh, should that should this be in place, then I think uh, organizations can uh, you know weather a storm and and look ahead and you know sort of come through. So these not essentially, timely, I think, not are the, timely, but yeah. we had an expensive knock down our head three years ago, and we are very well aware and now prepared. Look, we know how to handle things. Absolutely. And also, if you remember, in the first few months of the pandemic, we guys panicked. 
we guys overreacted that's true now we've that's learned true. how to realistically calibrate and Absolutely. get together. right and we of course everybody is dealing with precious lives more so with you when you guys are the brand ambassadors of the country and you're dealing with people who will carry great word of mouth thank you avinash i'm going to roll in with you amit somebody who's sitting i'm still looking for that glitter of diamonds i'm coming especially to surat to pick up some diamonds right uh, so like they said there was that movie diamonds are forever oh yes all right so i sent a delhi delhi boy i sent a delhi punjabi boy to surat to help me all sure. right so no, i was just being some wise cracks on the side so tell me let's talk about policy driven operations if you can tell us about the implication of government policies <clears throat> that are shaping the hospitality sector right more so in a location like surat where w- w- whose only equivalence is either brussels or parts of south africa tell me yeah thank you mr khanna i think just to clarify the idea is only skyrocketing skyrocketing in ahmedabad nowhere else in gujarat so main na hu phir nahi i'm talking about the ideas you said uh, no ideas are skyrocketing the rao mat na so just, see gujarat has always been as avik said gujarat has been the economic powerhouse yes and i think it's always been known as a manufacturing hub but if we look at the government policies in the last 15 20 years i think there's a lot of work that government has done to really push tourism and really take it to a different level so i think when you look at the tourism policy now which the government of gujarat has been working on in the last 15 20 years i think it's been fantastic and the good part that i see when they i look at the policy is they've really taken a lot of buckets in which they put tourism into so it's not only one bucket where they want to put everything in it's different buckets where they're looking at a very holistic approach of trying to get tourism to come across pan state so if you look at how adventure and wildlife has really been worked on by the policies of the government have been fantastic look at what they've done with gear the only place where you can get asiatic clients so the kind of hotels the kind of hospitality space that are developed around green gear is fantastic then as surat said puneet said ran ran utsav i think the kind of work that has happened because of the ran utsav with getting mr amita bachchan as the brand ambassador and talking about tourism of gujarat i think it really made gujarat bring in into the world map as a tourist destination so i think that was a great policy decision that they took then of course we all spoke about the statue of unity look at what kevar what is happening in kevadia today all the brands are wanting to be there wanting to start a hotel there and the whole infrastructure of kevadia and the area surrounding kevadia have really gone into a different level today from what they were almost about 6 7 years ago so i think these policy decisions have made a lot of difference there's a new area which is getting developed which is dang which is not very far from surat there's a place called saputara which is the only hill station of gujarat so i think dang is a beautiful place where they're trying to develop adventure and dang is a place where you have almost about 300 species of birds so imagine the kind of focus that the government policy has today on that and then when you look at another vertical that they're looking at is my tourism again is becoming big today in gujarat pan gujarat look at how mahatma mandir has been established and look at the kind of focus that it has brought into ahmedabad and gandhinagar and the kind of events mahatma mandir has got imagine 20000 square meters of exhibition space so i think my tourism and if you look at the policy the kind of growth that they are giving to people who are putting up large convention centers is fantastic there are a lot of people in surat who are trying to pick up big convention centers and exhibition spaces to really get a piece of that pie now because of the government policies because of the incentivization that the government is doing because of the mice tourism then look at how they've created a exhibition hall which is almost what 4500 square meters just below the statue of unity so again that's another way of really promoting the guys come and see statue of unity but you also have an opportunity to do a large conference so it's it's again then they have another bucket where they look at heritage tourism which is a very strong heritage tourism policy so they they have really catered to that aspect now 
in terms of they want the people to preserve and bhumesh i am a very big fan of mr amarnath the way he is turned around nimrana is fantastic so i think the government of gujarat is really looking at somebody like mr amarnath to do something in gujarat similar to what has happened to nimrana so what they are trying to do with this policy of heritage tourism is they are trying to tell people convert your havelis convert your palaces and restore them so that you can really optimize the economic value of that asset that you have with you so i think there are a lot of things you are muted mr khanna you are muted so aman aman is 10 years my senior from school i'm going i shall ensure he watches this but let me tell you he has so many demands from so many people ke come and take over these properties maintain them and revive them i am a big fan of him the way he's turned around i'll environment... ensure he watches this i'm going to send him i'll ensure he shall watch it live <laughs> thank yeah. you uh, but thank i i must tell you the opportunities are immense the government is doing a lot i mean surat for that matter is an example of being india's a uh, filthiest city if i must to say to being india's cleanest city cleanest city absolutely if you see in terms of the size of surat of course indore is number 1 but when you look at the size of surat which is almost about 8 million people in the large size it is the first the cleanest city in But, the country then so again if, if if there is a will there is a way absolutely then coming back to the way they look at things i think religious spiritual tourism has always been a very big strength of gujarat whether we look at dwarka dish temple in dwarka whether we look at somnath temple so there is a lot of that sector has really been developed and government has really done a lot of work a lot of really policy driven decisions taken on that sector to really cater to hospitality industry i'm not talking only about luxury space there are a lot of second tier second star three star four star hotels that have really mushroomed because of those policy decisions so that also has really helped and as my friend puneet and surat said i think we are now getting into this there is a new policy which has come which is the cinematic policy so the 69th film fair awards now are happening in gujarat next year so i think they are really trying to push for gujarat as a destination for people to come and shoot their tv series shoot their movies i think run of kutch white desert is a great example then i think we have one of the only blue certified beaches in in the in in india which is the shiv rajpur beach at dwarka so i think that's another destination that government is really trying to push to really showcase so i think a lot is happening look at what they are doing with the sura diamond goes today it is no, no, they, they are have, they are they are doing a lot uh, so I, have, amit i'm going to take a force break over there we are uh, uh, going to uh, uh we have to take that break we have to bring in our sponsor there all right absolutely thank you thank you so much Thank you, uh, thank you, Amit. Are you done with your response? Closed? Yeah, I, I'm almost done. You you can see how excited I am about the policies of the government of Gujarat. We are all excited. We are <laughs> all so excited. All right, thank you, Amit. Thank you. Sorry, I had to cut you down because of the uh, uh, constraints for a commercial break. Yeah, yeah. Right. So let me now roll into the second part of the uh, the episode. Avi, come back to you. Uh, so abhi yes. uh, tell me about the uh, strategic infrastructure leverage you know today everything is all about leverages uh if you can explore how general managers can leverage strategic infrastructure developments to enhance uh, operational efficiencies in short yes so certainly so see uh 
as a general manager of a hotel now what i'm going to say may appear very weird or from other worldly but uh, we actually do a lot of good to the society because there is a lot of employment that we create and all this is possible only because if we can create operational excellence if we can create operational efficiencies using the infrastructure leverage so what is happening now is that in gujarat there have been lot of very good events which have happened in the last couple of years and looking forward we are seeing more of them to come up so what is happening during these events we are able to get a lot of people who we give employment to in fact some of us in amdavad some of the hoteliers we have all got together and with the help of tata trusts we have started a initiative where we are training people who are from underprivileged backgrounds and where we are giving them basic skills culinary skills basic housekeeping skills and giving them employment so as a result we are helping the downtrodden and since we have a large capacity we are able to leverage the efficiency and we are able to generate employment so the infrastructure push which the government is doing the policy push which the government is doing is being leveraged by the hospitality industry to generate employment which is giving us operational efficiency also also we are able to see that more and more hotels are coming up across different brands across different star segments not only in amdavad but in rest of gujarat in fact recently there was a discussion wherein amdavad hoteliers we are trying to push tourism into rest of gujarat also so as a result the whole tourism the whole uh, infrastructure which is coming up in rest of gujarat is benefiting so it's a um, it's a um, it's it's like a thing which is happening that we are benefiting the infrastructure and infrastructure is benefiting us so we are leveraging our operational efficiencies on the basis of infrastructure and vice versa so this is a very very good cycle which has started in gujarat and uh, the hoteliers are already playing a very crucial part in it and i would recommend that we continue to play a even bigger part in it and supporting the government because we should not always think that the government will make better and better policies create no. better and better infrastructure we have no. to do our part so we have to leverage it in a better and better way so that we derive better operational efficiencies so that the um, we are able to generate more employment we are able to create more suppliers we are able to create more hotels more tourism infrastructure so all this is already going in the right direction and i i am thankful to everybody else my other colleagues because everybody is playing a very crucial role in this and i wish and uh, and i'm sure that everybody will continue to do a great job in this area so we will continue to leverage this so uh, excellent uh, you know uh, it it's like networking so you've got to leverage you've got to get the ideas hand hold hands and move on and the government has really set a, a, a great sops and rules and we now need to walk the talk yes thank you so much exactly kinan i'm back to you uh so you know workforce management and excellence if you can address the challenges related to workforce management and outline some strategy for recruitment training and retention you know you guys like i keep saying in show after show you guys are actually the skippers the captains of large sea going vessels right you cannot you need the people and you need them for long you need we may want to bring down attrition to zero it will never happen and look the development cycle of building talent you cannot shorten that you can compress it slightly but jo time lena hai wo time lega so how do you what are your plans and how do you manage that should we should be very dear to all of us all the panelists here and probably all hoteliers across across the country like you say people are at the heart of creating luxury hospitality experience and that therefore your workforce or human capital is the most important while you may continue to invest in capital in building big luxurious buildings it's the staff and the people with it that drive it um got to one of the toughest tasks i have 
had as being an opening general manager of a hotel, I would say is the recruitment of good quality manpower. And now a little bit more than a year in operation, it would be the retention of good quality manpower. I do believe that uh, as a state, we are one of good exporter of manpower. What I, when I say that, what I mean, people come to our hotels, learn, train, and then move on. Oh, we, we need to start retaining them. Yeah. Now, there may be many aspects that uh, that that may be around it. One is knowledge, probably one is uh, openings and avenues for uh, the, the in-house employees or the employees here to release steam. And for that, they move on to, to bigger tier cities or even abroad. So now what I say, the current point challenge, which every one of us is facing, while it's the tourism policies and the opening of new hotels, there will be a lot of I would say competition among ourselves. One is among the staff that is there and one is to get new ones. That's why it's very important that we maintain a balance when it comes to recruitment. That there has to be, you had mentioned it earlier in your conversation that one of the best things about Gujarat is business. So people enjoy doing business more rather than joining jobs and working in hotels. So that we have to maintain that mix. So when our recruitment comes in, we have to look at both the within the state as well as outside the state and maintain a healthy balance when it comes to that. Another new aspect which we at ITC Hotels are really focusing on our diversity and inclusion. Whereas to maintain a healthy healthy balance when it comes to diversity and inclusion as well when it comes to the different communities that are there. So going forward, our focus primarily drives on these. And then the thing is that once once you get the people on board, the next is hand holding. Whereas there is a, a, a mentor system. So one thing, another good thing that we are pioneering to try and increase people to stay longer is new joiners. They can't be thrown immediately into the frying pan. They will get burned. You need to have someone with them, a catalyst, someone to say that slowly inducts them into operations. True. So the mentoring system, which would really help them to get stay longer. Uh, like I said, attrition is something where you also mentioned is not something that we will stop. But it is something that we can probably slow down. It's not going to stop completely. The rate of attrition can be slowed. It can be slowed if people are happy coming into work, where they feel valued, where they feel important. So HR practices, when it comes to taking care of associates, giving them avenues, not only it's not only of enjoyment. It's also where they feel that they are growing and developing as professionals, where there's a career-defined route which is there, which can be shown to them that this is the opportunity to grow. We have leadership programs, we have business leadership programs, we have development programs for staff where they can grow into management. There are fine examples of associates growing today into general managers, into f managers. As long as these stories continue to be put out there, as long as the, the associates which are there with you feel that they are valued and they are developed, it's not about just fun. It's about where they feel that they have growth opportunities within the company, where they can move from one ITC hotel to another ITC hotel. These are practices which will only help in retention. And that's what we are doing and we are pushing forward for all associates within the chains. Great. So I think that's uh, brilliant. You see, and also please understand, we owe it to these children. Children, because we are the custodians of their career, right? So we owe it to them because not too long ago, we were where they were, they are today, right? So. So I always say, do for the other what you would want others to do for you. Yeah, they need, so, they need, they need to see you as adding value. Absolutely, they will, they will only join you and work with you if if they feel that they are that their self worth is preserved. If taking them and forward, we should we it's also uh, uh, you know uh, um, they must have faith in us. Yes, right. So they yes. they must look up to us that here is somebody. I can work with and grow with. We have to learn from the past for that. Or perhaps develop. Three years ago. Or, or, or uh, perhaps uh, develop with. You know, so I'm now going to come into you, uh, 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 Suraj. Mereko ye batao. Pehle to, I'm going to come into you on this uh, part of uh, sustainability. Tell me, I have this short inquiry regarding sustainability. How do you envision sustaining and advancing your eco-friendly practices in the future? I mean, uh, the last round, 
uh, Keenan has already spoken a bit on it, but how do you add that extra value to this? I think sustainability has to to be redefined. I mean, it's it's just not about cutting wastage or perhaps you know using um, efficient electricity bulbs and things like that. <clears throat> We came across as a fantastic uh, definition of sustainability, which talks about fulfilling the needs of current generation without compromising the needs of future generation and ensuring a balance between economic growth. Now, when you look at how we look at as an IHG, we, we've taken IHG as a very strong way. Uh, we call it as a responsible business. In fact, within our community, we launched something called Journey to Tomorrow, it's a 10-year fantastic program, and it covers some unheard things, at least as far as sustainability is concerned. So we talk about, there are five pillars that we've identified, how we want to work for the next 10 years in this. We've said, we want to champion a diverse culture where everyone will thrive. Now, what it means in simple understanding for hoteliers like us is, we want to bring in equality, inclusion, and fairness which is a key element today when we talk about retaining manpower and especially when you want to be dependent on the social local supply for manpower. We want to bring in a gender balance. In fact, one of our hotels has gone ahead in India and hired the third gender, which you would have seen that many of us perhaps have seen them on the streets and perhaps there's no career defined for them. And this was applauded so well that this was discussed in Dubai office recently. And we're encouraging other hotels to go ahead and look at how can we have them as part of our team. We're also talking about our well-being because well-being is something that we thought that, you know, a man cannot cry. But we brought in our understanding. We said it's okay to feel not okay. And we have our organizational process where we have said, if you don't feel okay with anything that you go or come across in the hotels, please come across and talk to someone about it. The other element, the pillar number two we have also included is we're trying to improve the lives of our guests by making sure that when we make a new hotel or renovate or refurbish, we try and incorporate a lot of local items that perhaps is produced locally, which helps in transportation cost, carbon emission, and making sure that we are also supporting the local livelihood. And at the same point in time, we're going back and looking at how do we aid in supporting or reducing the local poverty? Because when you support the local economy, it automatically feeds the local people and gets the more gets more support for the hotel. Energy, I'm sure we, we keep discussing, and that's one thing that a lot of hoteliers have been taking a lot of pride in that. Obviously, carbon emission and climate change support, reducing our wastage, in terms of wastage, what we've also identified recently and incorporated in our ways of working is food wastage. We've also used technology in terms of identifying how technology can help us in terms of food wastage. So we've tied up with a company which not only looks at the segregation of the wastage, but also tells us through a data of what wastage is coming out and if it needs any intervention in terms of understanding why is that wastage coming in and wastages have been defined, whether it is coming from buffet dishes, is it coming from plates, is it coming from preparation, is it coming from processing of the food, and what as a step can a hotel take in order to reduce that? Food wastage, we've realized that in case if it is not controlled, it could become a major problem for us. And I'm sure a lot of hotels today pay for food wastages being picked up by the municipal corporations. Not only it's a wastage, and it also adds up to the cost. Actually, so taking, we should feel guilty about it. Actually, yes. We're educating our client, and what we can do is we can re-engineer our, re our menu. We can look at the portion size. We can educate our guests. We can educate our employees and team members. And if we not do that, I'm sure there are not days again far when we may have to start because we see a lot of farmers' kids are running away from farming, they don't want to do farming. So ultimately, where would we get these raw materials from ultimately? In fact, one fine day. True. And the last but not the least is we're also looking at conserving water and, and securing what can we do in order to ensure that the water access is remained 
in supply at all the places which are at great risk, which could be lesser usage of toxic agents or chemicals, especially in laundries, cleaning supplies, and perhaps, you know, we look at because more water is required, more water is required in processing of food, more water is required in cleaning of the kitchen equipments and materials. We're also looking at what can we do in terms of smart irrigation, recycling of water, whether we're using it in air conditioning plant, we're using it in terms of our flushing systems, cleaning, irrigation support at the hotel. And also we're looking at how do we include our team members and social local people in terms of making this exercise a successful event? Thank you so much. Uh, uh, that that really helps. You know, we've we've got to be with that proverbial conjuice, right? Of how do we? You know, we grew up in an environment where we used to uh, we never had disposable bottles. We if we wanted our aerated drinks we had to give our empties and then get the refills absolutely so, and of course not to talk about newspapers and all so let me come into you puneet last time we spoke about the global part of the industry and how to make a reach now let me pick on your mind for futuristic innovations and if you can sh share some insights on uh, how you look ahead at innovative approaches and technologies which uh, you know make a general manager's armor and how do you foresee implementing them in the luxury hospitality sector so i think the right example is with you mr khanna you are more navigating all this with your phone you see you know and uh, and uh, in today's date, uh, for any general manager, uh, a phone is his office. You know, it is it is as as good as that. So, as and when there is a newer model of a, of a phone launch, whatever brand it may be, there are these new features that help you. Uh, you can be anywhere and still be there. You know, to be able to resolve uh, uh, at least most of the crisis. And well, moving yeah. ahead from a futuristic perspective, uh, technology uh, in, in, at this age or the, or the generation in which we are at the moment is rapidly increasing um, and it is equally expensive. Uh, what is important to know is that, yes, it is great to talk about uh, technology, but it is for a newer hotel, which are opening up the, the hotel that we are developing uh are are far more technologically advanced than the ones which we already have as legacy hotels uh, from past but technology is really helping us uh, to start with guest experience i think that's the one most important factor uh, where where it is really helping us whether it's about smart hotel uh, rooms or whether it is about uh, internet of things or whether it is about mobile check in service uh, before you even reach the hotel or it has made the check-in experience itself uh, so flawless. I can remember the days when it will take at least uh, four to five to seven minutes to check in a customer. Now, if it is not busy, you can literally walk him to the room. Uh, and if the customer is pre-checked in and the key is on the mobile, you don't even need to come to the reception. You know, <laughs> so it is. It is. It is such contactless payments. You know, I mean, uh, uh, not many years ago. Uh, you know, five, eight years ago, I mean, there was a lot of money, credit card, all of that. Nowadays, you know, people trust that box, which is there on a, uh, on a, on a small tailor at the street saying that, you know, 175 rupees received. And, and, and now you can just tap payments through Apple pay or Samsung pay or, or many other, uh, opportunities, you know, um, bandwidth. I mean, this has become such an important thing in hotels. It has almost become a criteria for staying or not staying in a hotel. If the internet bandwidth is good and you are able to have your five, six devices connected, uh, you go to that hotel, although it might be five minutes away from your next competition hotel in a way. So it has become such an important factor for people to decide whether I will go there or not go there. Uh, Cybersecurity. I mean, all of our things is now we are moving into mobiles. Uh, technology has to really take into guest experience factor that, okay, I am at a secure location 
and and that can only happen because and that's where the brands comes into picture to kind of give you okay your pic data with its credit card or any other information is safer and that can only happen through the use of this technology uh we were talking about sustainability i mean so much of technology has come in of buying power through solar or or windmill technology or many others in terms of water conservation rainwater harvesting or many many other factors i can go on in order to control the pnl of the hotel you know futuristic so, uh, way now if we look at it the same things are now moving ahead to augmented reality experiences that you can be somewhere and do a complete hotel tour uh, using an augmented reality uh, spec uh, your uh, the, the there are certain technologies like canvas which is being used for for designing the website of a hotel wherein they are becoming more interactive chatbots are appearing on on the websites to be able to answer your question you don't want need to pick up a phone and ask a question you can just ask a chatbot and your question is answered uh when you look at artificial intelligence you know uh use of artificial intelligence in capturing guest data and and nowadays uh there are pop ups in our our opera and many other places related to artificial intelligence that gives you okay mr khana came in last time stayed in room number 1102 and uh, and his room temperature was this and his water temperature was that and so it it automatically gives you all the guest experience management tools through artificial intelligence to personalize your stay and this is becoming more and more uh, reality than what used to be used to listen about in some sci-fi movies it is currently happening we are using it in our hotels already uh <clears throat> there is so much of data on on saas service or in hospitality and uh, or whether whether you talk about uh, putting it on the cloud whichever way we want to call it uh, there is uh, another very important factor which is to do with the workflow management you know uh, when we have been talking about finding the right people to do the job just now kinen was talking about the manpower technology is really taking it uh, leaps and bounds in accounting systems in our hotels in back end uh, purchasing systems in our hotels uh, we have to be i mean i can proudly say that hyatt hotels as a as a company is is one of the leading hotel companies which embraces technology first and then moves on with it i mean as as hyatt we have our own revenue management software system which we use uh, nowadays a customer goes on a phone and can can check the price of seven hotels together on one screen and decide where to stay and it is this technology of of linking yourself into those systems to be there uh so that you can be booked first or booked better so that's the whole uh, uh, i mean another another very important uh, uh, aspects uh we have very recently installed a, a latest technology because we our hotel was built in 2012 uh, 2014 uh at that point of time uh, there was no such technology to self clean the air handling units in order for efficiency of hvac and we have just installed it very very recently now and it has become so efficient that our bms system really works uh, on its own there is no human intervention required for us to ensure that the air is clean or we have to i mean there are parameters which are digitally coming in or the air quality index inside the room or in the corridor it switches on and switches off on its own so it creates efficiency of power uh, saving as well at the same time so it's a combination of many factors you know that go in in our uh, in our system uh travelers i mean earlier we used to uh, you know identify as business travelers or leisure travelers now there is pleasure travelers there is no distinction between uh, you know business and leisure uh, anybody coming in would like to go to a netflix or to whatever they want to watch it on tv systems or any other system what they have in the room it's the technology that keeps them connected and they would like to possibly video call is a very simple way look at what we are doing now i mean 10 years ago this used to be in a banquet hall over a stage 300 people watching us and today we are doing it online you know and i'm sure that uh right now uh, most of us are at station at some location uh there is time in next couple of years uh, we are sure that our uh, 3d models will be visible uh through wherever we are and i don't really need to be in my office to be able to speak like this we saw it during the last elections 
Yeah, correct. We saw it during the last elections. Correct. So, so this is already going, you know. I mean, um, from Wi-Fi, there is a new technology that has come in, which is called as SIP DECT. Now, SIP DECT is a technology which will come in India, I'm sure, in the next few years. And, and you don't need Wi-Fi anymore, you know. So, you don't need these connections and these bandwidths when you have this SIP DECT coming in. You will be easily able to connect to a device and, and that's secure that you don't really need to be right now. If I'm, if you're staying in my hotel, you will be able to access my Wi-Fi only when you're in my hotel. But if you are my resident guest and and I can define a 10 kilometer area, you will still be connected to my internet uh, when that technology comes in through 5G. So uh, it is a it is such a phenomenal uh, way. Uh, social listening and social sharing, you know, I mean technology. I mean there are now TikTok. I mean although it may not be a very va valid uh, experience for our country, but it is such an amazing tool that is coming in there there are it is gaining a lot of exposure like TripAdvisor so yeah I mean uh, we can go on technology certain thing which is uh, uh, which is really making a difference there are in our lives technology scares yeah. you right yeah. so, but I, mean, it, I would like it, to reemphasize once again it is something which is to make things better yeah but at the moment it is expensive and it it should be able to be affordable to be able to make that change all right. Thanks, Apayal Puneet. So, Avinash and Amita. Amit, my last two questions to you, I'll roll in with Avinash. We'll keep it within three minutes each. Uh, so, let's talk about Avinash. Let's talk about distinctive branding in comparative landscape. Uh, if you can share insights on how you as a general manager plan to distinguish your uh, luxury hotels in a highly comparative environment. Short, crisp, succinct. I think uh, distinctive branding, as, as we all know, is, is a matter that uh, takes uh, shapes in various, uh, you know, it's the architecture of the hotel, it's the it's the decor inside the hotel, and it's also the communication that uh, you, you you know use to come across. So in my hotel, for example, uh, in the picture that you see behind me, the fenestration that you see on the windows is a, is a hark back to the step well of Gujarat. So, so since we are in Gujarat and we are rooted to the soil, uh, the hotel, uh, you know, building uh, has been inspired by that. In terms of the interiors, one can, uh, you know, uh, use a handicraft and, you know, uh, art from the city and from the state, uh, which embellishes the uh, interiors of the hotel. Uh, uh, distinction in branding is, is, is to my mind, uh, something that uh, can be connected with uh, also the story that, that gets told. So when you create a narrative and a story, uh, that is what sort of, you know, is most effectively communicated to the target audience. And, and I can't think of a better example than uh, the responsible luxury uh, tagline of ITC hotels, uh, where uh, you're, you're essentially making the customer your hero of the story. And, and what you're really doing is offering a value proposition where uh, the, the hero is the customer and the customer makes a choice to choose a responsible uh, experience uh, and, and therefore, you know, uh, subscribes to your, uh, you know, uh, your effort of, of reaching out to the customer. And and in doing so, he uh, he he takes action because you're offering a a, a prospect where uh, he he's uh, he's sort of uh, you know combining uh, sustainability with his luxury experience, and therefore choosing something which is right by his own mind and by his own uh, you know conscience. So in an increasingly uh, you know aware world where where we are looking at sustainability as a as a fact of life and as a reality. Uh, the the fact that we are branding uh, the the hotel concept uh, as as a responsible choice, I think works well in terms of reaching out to somebody who's wanting to make that choice. So uh, an another example of distinction in branding, uh, if I can use uh, the example of my own city, so Baroda is actually a manufacturing hub, uh, but but you would read about Baroda being the Sanskari city. So uh, so you know immediately what what you connect with is the is the culture that the city is known for and you know what it offers in terms of the culture. Uh, so that's something that uh, you know uh, conveys that the story is actually able to reach out and and connect with uh, the customer. Uh, so so in a nutshell, I think uh, distinctive branding uh, is all about uh, creating your narrative and and uh, creating that story and you know, reaching out to the prospective uh, clientele. Thanks, Apil uh, Avinash. You couldn't have done it in such a compact uh, response better. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Avinash. Uh, last but not the least, before we cap the show, I'm back to my friend who's going to send me diamonds, Amit Mehta. Amit, tell me, exceeding, evolving, 
guest expectations right if i was to ask you about them i'm just going to uh, uh, get you to examine how a general managers plan to exceed the evolving expectations of dis- discerning luxury hotel guests can be what would be your response okay. thank you mr kanna and, and also include in that diverse guest experience yeah. sure so thank you so again the physical luxury of a hotel or a guest room is really not important to a luxury customer today because i think the kind of residents that our customers have the kind of trained staff that they have in their room houses is far superior sometimes than what we give in our hotels so i think what a luxury traveler today is looking at is a experiential component because for him or her the experiential component becomes very important because when you look at today's luxury traveler they will not want to put anything luxurious that they have bought might be a louis vuitton bag or something on their social media handles but you give them a once in a lifetime experience or give them an experience which is small but something that they cannot have at home it'll be all over their social media true because they really want to talk about that kind of an experience so true. for us so for us today as luxury hotel general managers and luxury hotel operators i think it becomes very important that we really look at customization customization of a customer or a guest becomes very very important and for customization what i mean is dive into the data for us at marriott hotels i think uh, our marriott bonvoy loyalty program is sacrosanct we really take it very very seriously for us our customer becomes very important and whatever information we have about that customer we really try and customize that stay based on that experience that we can really call out for that customer so i think the data becomes very important dive into that data of the customer and really customize his or her stay based on that experience so that becomes very important because today a customer is looking for pursuit of moments they're looking at small moments that they really want to experience for example after covid what we experienced in surat i can be very particular about this city is we had a lot of people who came for work and joy work station vacations so people wanted to come with their families so what we did was when the gentleman or the lady are working the spouse is free so diamonds again very very important we have a lot of friends who own large diamond factories in this city so we were able to really customize tours for our customers to go and experience diamond polishing and diamond cutting this is something that you really can't experience otherwise true so that was one experience that and we could see the excitement that the lady or the gentleman had when they came back to the hotel oh i was holding a diamond which was worth 5 cr can you imagine you know, why can't we do this when you go to brussels or antwerp uh, they they take you to the bourses where the yeah. diamonds are traded and right. diamond polishing factories absolutely so we and need... the entire labor is from india especially from surat correct correct so i am just telling you mr khanna the kind of experience that you can create with these small touch points is absolutely phenomenal so i think that's that's one area that really is important today and then when we look at another area that we look at is food food becomes very important so another experience that you can provide to a customer is food whether it's giving them the kind of food that they want to eat or helping them to experience how that food is created mm-hmm. like for example in surat or this part of the gujarat in winters there is a dish called umbadio which is a dish that is made out of seasonal winter vegetables which are put in a big ardhan pot you dig the ground put that pot inside the ground put cow dung and everything around it and with that heat the dish gets cooked and it is all covered with aromatic leaves so we in our hotel have a nice lawn so we've created a small zone in the winters where we take our customers and give them that experience of umbadio and that the same umbadio gets served to them and imagine the kind of excitement you see in children and ladies i didn't know see. about this i didn't so this is extremely new yeah so i i think it's important and again all our friends spoke about sustainable tourism so i i think today's customer is very very focused on that the more we can talk about it or the more we can showcase it on our operations it really makes them feel 
that okay i am really adding to that whole environment of not polluting the environment so i think we need to really create that experience for our customer today so i think in a nutshell it's all about this and we can keep talking about it we have enough experience about the customers but i think in a nutshell it's all about customization giving them the moments and giving them the cultural immersion of the place excellent i'm coming to gujarat by the way soon you have me excited i am right. taking it to a diamond factory no not just the diamond factory the food the people oh yes right so um, uh, great so with that uh, we shall cap up the show with your permission right so uh, as we conclude this insightful exploration it's evident that the general managers steering luxury hotels in gujarat are not just keepers of tradition but pioneers of dynamic future of a dynamic future your vision your vision for 2025 is deeply entrenched in operational strategies show and it showcases a commitment to excellence amid challenges challenges are always going to be there if there were no challenges right we would not have the jobs that we do have right we will have them all lined up gujarat's luxury hospitality sector is driven by leaders like you who are poised for an exciting journey and it promises not just growth but an unparalleled guest experience in the years leading to 2025 you know thank you so much gentlemen you've been great brand ambassadors and you rush and you run such fantastic properties i mean you look at the assets which sit behind you on virtual screens i can't wait to get there i can't wait to sample your uh, luxuries um uh, so expect me back there soon and ladies and gentlemen we are soon going to be back next week on thursday december 7th again 4 to 5 pm and this time another new location another new set of general managers but before we sign off and before i thank all the stars on the show today let me thank diversity with this video Thank you, Team BW. Thank you, Team BW Hotelia, for bringing out show after show every week. And last but not the least, to Team Gujarat. Uh, and thank you, Avik. Thank you for your inputs. Thank you for valuable insights. Thank you, Kinan. It's been a great show. Our first one together, Avik, Kinan, and uh, Puneet. Uh, thank you. Uh, avinash suraj and amit our second show together absolutely listen i uh, it takes a lot to prepare and respond and i'm grateful to you all for gracing our platform for enriching the platform thank you for your wonderful presence and inputs thank you gentlemen and thank you bw hotelier and team bw bye bye thank you mr khanna thank you thank you mr khanna pleasure